And I'm really happy to uh, introduce and welcome Thomas Dolby to Brookdale Public Radio. I've been a fan for forever and a day, and it's really nice to finally get a chance to uh, to meet you. If they only know the music that, that radio played off of your uh, albums back in the 80s, um, they wouldn't be completely aware of the different influences that you that you put on every album, whether it's you know the Cajun sounds or or a little bluegrass. Everyone's I remember the stuff that Garcia did with you, mm -hmm. which was you know, and, and all different types. The Eno, the ambient stuff. I mean, there's all different types of music that yeah. that's part of your your repertoire. Well, it's a blessing and a curse, really. You know that I was able to do something as overtly commercial as as She Blinded Me with Science or Hyperactive or Europa, because it made it hard for me to persuade a record label to get behind. You know the more mm -hmm. atmospheric stuff. You know, because you, okay. I remember one time going into my record company offices, uh, Capital Tower in L.A., yeah. and uh, somebody saying, "Oh, everybody here is in love with Screen Kiss. They just all the secretaries are swooning over it, and mm -hmm. we just you hear it, and every floor you go to, you hear Screen Kiss, Kiss playing. I'm going great. So is that going to be the single? Well, no. We we're kind of thinking that we go with something that was a bit more like She Blinded Me with Science. You know, right. so so it's very hard to get them to to shake it off. And and in fact, they were amazed that I wouldn't just having hit on you know a pay dirt formula for She Blinded Me with Science. They're amazed that I wouldn't just sort of you know cookie cutter out a bunch more songs along the same lines. Right. But I, I'm you know I'm automatically. Um, pushed away from something that's successful into a new area. And I love exploring new musical genres, you know. I mean, I'm at my most um, creative when I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> and I guess I've been very creative for most of my life because I've never know what I'm doing here. <laughs> when, as a kid, I mean, you, you obviously were exposed to a large array of different music because you seem to be interested in, in everything, you know, from classical to jazz to soul to R&B to funk. To, I mean, you, you know, you did... You know Clinton, you know George Clinton music, all I mean everything. Is that because of what your dad did and be able to travel around the country, around the world like he did, and, and and kind of pull you around? Did you get a chance to, you know, is that where you think you first started picking up on this interesting taste well, in my, music? My dad was a professor of classical archaeology at Oxford University, and yeah. uh, although I got to travel with him, you know, we didn't exactly check out the local sort of basement jazz clubs. Well, that's true. <laughs> you were going out there and checking out Casablanca. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There was no, uh, there was no music really in my family. I mean, they listened to a bit of classical music, but not really pop music at mm -hmm. all. So it was, you know, I was down under the bedclothes at night with a transistor radio and an earphone listening to Radio Caroline. You know, that was which was the above for those people. That was the uh, the pirate radio station yeah. that was off the coast of, yeah. of England. Yeah. That just had no format. They would play everything. All They'd the play time. anything at all. Yeah. It was really exciting to see what they played. And there was Luxembourg as well. And, and you know, BBC was fairly staid in those days. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm interested in in all sorts of different genres of music. But mainly, what drives me to use those different musical idioms in my own music is sort of frustration. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's like I don't have a big bluegrass collection, and and I kind of I, I hear a little bit, and I go, mm, well, this would be great if you mixed it up with hardcore techno. You know, and uh, and do a bit of mashups. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so I, I like to look for sort of uh, you know ironic mixtures of of things, and and a lot of my heroes growing up were people like Zappa or Beefheart or you know Dan Hicks or whatever who sort of um, you know broke across uh, genres, and just experiment experimented with everything and, and formed music that, like when I listen to some of the music that's coming out today, like Mo mm. and and that band, I always I hear influences of Zappa mm. in their music because they're first of all insanely good musicians, but they also you know have these weird time changes and mm. just like put in three different styles of music in one song, and I think that's absolutely brilliant, you know, and and so I can see where you'd be excited by that as well. One of the things that I've always wanted to know about you as well is you've always been, at least in my mind, like on the cutting edge of of new technology like or like when MTV became big you were one of the videos that everybody saw you know you were there and and I did you like back then did you realize that MTV was going to be as important to music at that time as it turned out to be or did you just think it was just well they said to make a video so they'll do a video you know I didn't really care actually no. um you know I because in fact, in retrospect, you know, my first album had come out and it had done well critically. Mm -hmm. Was getting almost zero radio play. We had right. three stations or something, you know, when when my video came out. But I just saw the MTV, the arrival of MTV, and the fact that it had just sort of rolled out to major cities. So it was now, you know, a platform where a lot of people were going to see it. 
And it was at a time at the beginning when it was a hip thing to do to stay in on a Saturday night, you know, and, and uh, watch music videos instead of going out to a gig or a club. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, that was an invitation to express myself further. And that's something throughout my life I've always done. My interest in new technology is that it gives me a new palette, you know, with which to paint. Do you see, do you see your music as cinematic, like when you're coming up with stuff? in your head for a new song or whatever do you see it as a film you know I mean, i'm probably not explaining it rightly but like do you are, you are you a visual person with your music yeah definitely very visual i mean there's a song on my new album 17 hills right. uh, which is a seven and a half minute epic and um i pretty much put it together like a, a film editor uh, you know, I saw this couple who had, you know, robbed a store and they're burning across the desert in a convertible and we're, we're off in the distance and we're seeing the trail of dust behind them. And then we cut into the car to a close up of the radio, you know, and the music is what's the music that's playing on their radio while they're driving across the desert. And so that's kind of how I think from verse to verse. Um, and there's there's a section which is just string quartet and voice right. uh, when uh, the the protagonist is he's in jail, you know, he's in Alcatraz and, and he's he's hatching this scheme to uh, bribe a lawyer to bring in a hacksaw blade and, and he's going to build himself a raft um, out of driftwood and just take his chances on the bay. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely think visually and, and the whole idea of 17 Hills, you know, he spots different numbers of different of hills, you know, five from the iron grill and nine from the lead roof and 12 from the downpipe. And finally, the last thing he sees is all 17 Hills Uh you know, as he's drifting out yeah. towards the Farallones, and, and it's left like that. And so it's kind of like the, the dolly shot, you know, the, the, the cherry picker shot going off into the distance, end of movie. Aren't you going to kiss me? I gotta go. Nobody likes to kiss an ashtray. Dude, I got my phone! How would you like to save your life from an ugly or reckless driving death? Act now by slowing down and we'll guarantee you complete satisfaction. Awesome! There is no spokesperson to prevent reckless driving. Speak up. Andy, slow down. Thomas Dolby live in the studio with us on this cloudy Tuesday afternoon. A beautiful song from, from a great new album, which started off as an EP, right? If I'm not mistaken, or a collection of EPs, I guess is the yeah. right way to say it. So the, the album is called A Map of the Floating City. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my floating city, there are three sort of continents, and each one has a different flavor. And uh, that's from the continent called Americana with a K. Right. I lived in the USA for about 23 years and moved back to the UK about three, four years ago, uh, mainly because of the schools, actually. I had you know, high school age kids, and mm -hmm. I just wanted them to get a UK education. And um, I look back very fondly at my time in the USA, and, and you know we give you a bad rap pretty much in the UK. And, and in fact, but we have this sort of secret admiration for the fact that there is um, there's there's indigenous music here, you know, mm -hmm. folk and jazz and, and country and so on, which uh, which we don't really have. I mean, we're great at importing styles from the rest of the world and jazz, you know, just like making them cool and right. exporting them to the rest. Although of the world. we exported your Gaelic and, and Celtic music and and from the whole you know region and turned it into or is a major player of the Appalachian music. So. Yeah, that's that's certainly true. Yeah, yeah. For in musicological terms, but I mean, what we did with you know with reggae or with uh, with African music or with house or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, even blues, you know, yeah. with, with Led Zepp and Clapton and people, um, you know, we're just we're just very good at putting a gloss on things and then selling it back <laughs> to you, <laughs> <laughs> which we buy in droves. It's great. <laughs> yeah. So this, uh, well, you have uh, a whole bunch of equipment sitting in front of, of you there that you're going to uh, play some music for us live here in the studio. Yes, yeah, so I'm doing a little mini tour of the USA um, just in advance of my album. I'm hoping to do a full tour with a band in the spring. Cool. And uh, so I needed to go around and, and just bring with me whatever I could get in a backpack. So right. stuff fixed in a backpack and I can, I can walk onto a plane with it, get through security just about. And so what it consists of is just like a, a small uh, MIDI keyboard and um, a set of pads on which I have samples. And um, so, so, you know, I'm going to play a song in a second called Spice Train, which is um, sort of the anthem of this, this uh, game that I created around a map of the floating Yeah, I want to ask you about it. There's so much I want to yeah. talk to you about. Yeah. We're, we're going to run out of time, <laughs> I, I know, know it, but there's so much more. Yeah, so, so on these pads, you know, so like the F11, 
beautiful string quartet, which you heard just there. <laughs> On these separate pads, I've got little licks that they do. And rather like you have a cart machine, right, right. For, for, for the things that you play, you know, I can just fire them off. And, I've, and I've, there's this great singer on there called Nikki Wells who, who sounds like this, you know. <laughs> and then lots of different things, bits of guitar licks and uh, even some mariachi horns. So because this song Spice Train is basically, you know, one uh, bass and drum groove mm -hmm. uh, with lots of things layered on top, I can sort of jam with it, you know, and it sounds like this full, you know, world music ethnic orchestra going on. But and it's all controlled by one little pad about the size of an by, iPad. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's easy to mess up with, but I have fun with it. It sounds know, so. like, I mean, that would just be, I, I can't play anything. I sit there, I could probably have a blast with that, just like creating funny stuff. Yeah, yeah, so it's fun to do. So, so I'd like to play you a song um, uh, from the Urban Noia section of the album. And this is called Spice Train. Great. Thomas Colby live here on Brookdale Public Radio. Thank <laughs> you. 
path is like a garage sale And I pedal my ways Wherever there's a flaw to fill And if you roll with it You can ride the spice train When it comes down to it You will trade it all for one night in her arms Still the beat goes on From Bahrain to Brixton From Beirut to Bruges From Beijing to Boston Still the beat goes on 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 Still be live here in the studio. That was amazing. I've got this big old smile on my face. It's going to take a, take a long time to wear off because that just sounded so cool in my headphones. That was just amazing. And it's so cool to have Thomas Dolby here live in the studio. I'm part of a team that ensures top quality, luxury, and safety to drivers all over the tri state area. At Rigatina Lexus, when customers usually come in unhappy, you know, they have a rattle here or they have something going on here, an oil leak here, and we go the extra mile to make sure we fix that, and when they do leave, they're very happy, and they don't have to return. I have like five of us from Brookdale, and uh, when we were in school, we used to do labs and stuff like that, and it was a lot of fun. After we graduated, now I'm actually working with them, and they actually became really good friends. I have a really good job, I'm making really good money. And once you accomplish your career and you actually go through with it, you should be happy, you know, and I think Brookdale actually provides that. I am Albert Rodriguez, a Lexus certified technician at Ray Katina, and I got my start at Brookdale. Saving lives in the world's poorest countries. Winning the fight against global AIDS and extreme poverty. There aren't two sides to these issues. There is only one. Please vote. One.org. Before I let you go, and I don't want to, you've got a couple of more songs you'd like to play yeah, for us. So there's another song from the album. Um, this is actually about New York City and about uh, being, you know, awake when it's too hot to uh, to sleep and, and the tricks your mind plays with you. And um, this one uh, actually features uh, Regina Spector as a, as a Russian waitress. And for people that don't know, Regina is from Russia. Yeah, she grew originally. up in yeah. Russia and, uh, and has Ethel on it again and um, uh, some interesting effects. So this is... Uh, and, and it's a kind of a, you know, I, I had a brief brush with Michael Jackson in the 80s, and so it makes me very sad, all the stuff that's going on now. But but I guess really... Was he, was he, was he a nice guy? When he was he, a lovely guy. He was an yeah. absolute sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, really sweet guy. I came within about five minutes of meeting him mm. one time. It was like this this weird little like juxtaposition in a, in a hotel in, I think, San Francisco. And I was I was in a hotel room, and he was in the room next door. Then I went into the room that he was in, and he had just walked out into the next room. So we just kind of passed each other. Well, I, I met him sort of like that because mm. I was editing the video for She Blinded Me in Science in Soho, London, mm. uh, in the the cubicle next to to where he was, you know, in the edit suite next to where he was, and, and we we got talking about music actually, and became friends. And um, you know, he asked me to write a song for him, uh, which I duly did, uh -huh. and it was hyperactive. Oh, really? And uh, I sent it to him. I didn't hear anything for a few weeks. And finally, I called him. I said, so what did you think of that of hyperactive that I sent you? He said, I like the drums. <laughs> and I said, okay, okay, well, can I send you something else? And he said, um, are you anywhere near Wales? I said, Wales, the country? Mm -hmm. said, yeah, a few hours drive. Yeah, why? He said, can you get me some ragwort for my llamas? <laughs> and that was the last time I spoke to him. Really? I said, 
her. Anyway, I mean, so th- this evil twin brother is a, a nod in Michael's direction. I think you'll tell, you'll be able to tell with the uh, vocal phrase. Don't worry, I'm not going to dance. <laughs> okay, um, I would have, uh, I would have liked it. Actually, I've seen you dance. So. <laughs> it's a song about denial. It goes like this. <laughs> say that New York City never sleeps But I think they're only talking about me It's 3 a.m. and 95 degrees Whoa, whoa, whoa So I dressed and went out for a bite to eat Yelena brought me carrot cake and tea Yelena brought me carrot cake and tea I wasn't there, that wasn't me It must have been my evil twin brother I couldn't hear, I didn't see It must have been my evil twin brother Evil twin, my evil twin brother The village was a maze of cobbled streets Slipped into a doorway at the rain With the warm air from the subway on our skin Whoa, whoa An alleyway you'd never normally take With a neon sign beneath a fire escape And the man with the walkie-talkie said come in In, in I wasn't there, that wasn't me It must have been my evil twin brother I couldn't hear, I didn't see It must have been my evil twin brother I wasn't there, that wasn't me, not me It must have been my evil twin brother I couldn't hear, I didn't see touched a drink in over a year But I told myself I'd stop at just one beer And found myself a stool at the bar Whoa, whoa A blur among the bodies in the straw I saw Elena spinning like a globe She took my hand and led me on the floor Floor I wasn't there I wasn't there That wasn't me No, no I couldn't move I couldn't breathe Evil twin That wasn't me It must have been It must have been my evil twin brother I wasn't there, that wasn't me No, 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 no How could I fall? How could I cheat, cheat, cheat?
Thomas Dolby live here in the studios of Brookdale Public Radio, 90.5 tonight. Thomas, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time out of your schedule to come in. I'm not going to let you go without doing one more song, but I know you got to fly. The uh, the new album, A Map of the Floating City, is that we've had it now here at the station for a while. Is it uh, available for people to go out and purchase, or is it just coming out now? Uh, it's going to be out on the 24th of October. Okay. I think you can at least pre-order it on Amazon. Uh, uh, if you come to one of my shows, I've got some there. <laughs> and speaking of which, tomorrow night, 92, uh, 92y.org is how you can pick yeah, up tickets. If you're listening on the web, uh, you know, from here I'm going to Chicago, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, and LA. So if you look on my website, thomasdolby.com, um, you can come down to one of those shows. Terrific. And then hopefully in the spring, you'll be back around again with a full band and uh, doing, a, doing a, a proper tour of major places and having fun. And hopefully you'll be able to come back again. 